put up with all this stuff. This situation is driving me insane. Somebody fetch my coat and hat and hand to my walking cane. nice and polite because you know you just heard that tune five minutes ago while it was warming up and you clap anyway i call that clap in that's right what should we do next fellas how about uh, a little brother bill <laughs> steve miller's gonna sing the lead on this one a great organist all right pal
did you know She's gonna buy me some old crow If that liquor store is closed She's gonna buy me a boat to row If that doggone boat won't swim Throw me a line and pull me in And that's okay on the old rowboat in tune. People wouldn't recognize my style. All right, let's do uh, Down in the Valley or something similar to that, all right? Okay.
clothes Let us go down to that valley once Now, so if you got a spot you'd like to do or something, Tom, go ahead and do it. All right, I can fill in here for a little while. Our broadcast tonight of uh, the Elvin Bishop Group is being brought to you as usual on these live broadcasts by the people at Pacific Stereo. And they only do this commercial and the one before because their idea is to allow you as much music as possible uh, and as much time to enjoy the groups that you listen to. Uh, tonight you're hearing uh, the new Elvin Bishop group. There's been some changes in the makeup of the group. And a little later on during the show, we'll tell you who the new members are. Uh, this portion of our broadcast, uh, well, the whole broadcast is, of course, being brought to you by Pacific Stereo and the people who make BASF recording tape. You know, BASF invented magnetic tape back in the early 30s, and they've been advancing tape technology ever since. Today, they're reel-to-reel -reel tape is one of the first choices of people who are really into recording their own music. Its low noise, high output formula simply outshines other standard tapes. Pick up a reel of BASF recording tape at your neighborhood Pacific Stereo store and see if it doesn't perform like a professional's first choice. When you come in, the people who work there will be happy to rap about any problems you have with your recordings, and their advice is free. They can also show you accessories and gear to make your tapes come close to studio quality. And then you can go in their uh, demonstration rooms and you can combine uh, the amp you're interested in, various kinds of speakers and turntables, and get it all together the way you want it. There are two Pacific Stereo stores in San Francisco, including the new one at 3355 Geary Boulevard that replaced Mel's Drive-In. Sorry to lose Mel's. You know, there are very few places where a man who can't stand can go to get a meal anymore. But you can go there for great equipment. And you can stop by on Saturday or Sunday until 6 p.m. Okay, let's get back in there and uh, hear some work from Elvin Bishop. Already? Yeah. Is it back in my hands, Tom? Already? As I said, this is something I didn't realize until recently, but there are actually some people in this world that don't like blues. I love it myself. So to make it as painless as possible, we're going to put a little story with it, too. So if you don't like blues, you, all you got to do is just shut up and sit there and listen to the story, okay? I've got a whole lot of money 
I've got four wheels to ride on I got a whole lot of money I've got four wheels to ride on But I'm just not getting no satisfaction out of my automobile Well, I'm riding all alone Now, I know this may sound like somewhat of a strange song. The, the words might not be making no sense. My name is Piggly Wiggly. I've got groceries on my shelf. Well, there's a story behind it that I would like to relate to you right now. In the South, the southern part of the United States, there's a large string, a chain of supermarkets called Piggly Wiggly Markets. It's similar to what Safeways are up here, you know. This chain of supermarkets is owned, operated, and was founded by a guy named Piggly Wiggly. He was a blues guitar player and singer. Not many people know this. He, he used to be like me, trying to make a living doing this, you know, but he's smarter than I was. He said, I gotta get out of this. I ain't making no money. He said, I need some financial security. I said, I think I'll go in the grocery business. So he, he, he went to the bank, got a loan, and uh, bought him a little corner grocery store, you know. He did pretty good with it. Next thing he knew, he had two of them, and then three. And pretty soon he went in the supermarket business. 20 years passed. 20 years passed and he was fabulously rich. He was doing well with his business. He drove around everywhere in a big old limousine longer than this studio is. With chauffeur driving up front, he'd sit up in the back, you know, and he had a bushel basket and a rake that he went in his different stores with to rake in the money with, you know, and take it to the bank. He was doing pretty good. But the only thing is, the only catch was for 20 years he had to work so hard that he never thought about one single thing in all those 20 years except groceries and money. He never touched a woman, he never thought about a woman. I know that sounds impossible, fellas, but you'd be, this is America, you'd be surprised. You're gonna have to take my word for it. But you know, it was bound to happen one day. I was fortunate enough to be there and be a witness. My hometown is Tulsa, Oklahoma. I was in the Piggly Wiggly, I was nine years old at the time, buying a comic book and a popsicle, and in comes this old rich man, this chauffeur was holding the door open for him, he had a $300 suit on, and he walked in, and it was Piggly Wiggly. And he, he looked over on aisle number three, and there was this fabulously foxy, beautiful checker, the most beautiful woman he ever seen in his life, and it just happened, he fell in love. It happens to everybody sometimes. He said, I got to have that woman. He said, I love her. I must have that woman. He said, but wait a minute, let me think about this. He said, I don't want to just go over and say, my name's Piggly Wiggly, I own this store you're working in, come on, let's go to bed. That wouldn't be fair. He said, I want to make sure that she loves me for my own true, honest, good qualities, you know. So he said, I, I, I can't do that, let me think a minute. He thought a minute, and he turned around, went outside the store. The old hippie was sitting down there on the sidewalk. It's all stoned and everything. He said, spare change, man, spare change. He said, it's good for your karma, give me some spare change. And Piggly Wiggly said, uh, come here a minute, man. He took him back in the alley, out behind the garbage cans, you know, and he traded clothes with him. He gave him his $300 suit for some old raggedy, messed up hippie clothes, you know, like, like I got on here, you know, that kind of thing. And he went back in the store, got him an empty cart, went around and filled it up with groceries, and come back and got in line in aisle number three. He said, I'm gonna talk to this chick now. I said, ooh, let me get my wrap ready. I know I'm just gonna knock her out. And he got up there and she checked the groceries for the guy in front of him, you know, and he come up, took the groceries out of his cart, put it on the counter, and he reared back, getting ready to wrap to her, and a strange thing happened. He lost his cool, his, his throat got dry, his tongue got stuck, you know, he couldn't think of nothing to say, and he got all nervous. His rap was so rusty after 20 years, you know, that he he just didn't know what to do. He just blew it, he got up, he said, uh, it's, uh, it certainly is a lovely weather we've been having, isn't it? She said, mm-hmm, green beans, 39 cents. She rung it up, you know, just like water off a duck's back. She'd been, she'd been there since seven o'clock in the morning and every cat that came in had a stronger rap than that. He says, well, I guess I better try a little harder. He said, uh, uh, you, uh, you certainly are a, a lovely woman, you know. She didn't bat an eye. She said, cheddar cheese, 59 cents. Rung it up, you know. 
finally he just lost his cool. He got desperate. He said, but I love you. He said, woman, I love you from the bottom of my heart. You're the only woman in the world that would ever fall in. I got to have you. She said, baloney, 79 cents. Rung that up. Didn't bat an eye. Finally, he got desperate. He said, well, I ain't getting over conversation-wise. I'm going to have to do something, take serious measures. I'm going to go out in the car and get my guitar out of the trunk and come back here and play for it. And that's got to melt her heart, break down some of this resistance. And i got to get to this woman somehow. And he come back in with his guitar, and he said, Off her apron, got out from behind the counter, and she was speeding the counter. Let's do watermelons, boys. This is our new single. So, what am I supposed to say? Epic Records, right? Okay. Stealing watermelons. One, two.
along I'm just wild about that something you got I got to get it all out It's good and high Now, if you folks happen to fall into a good mood on this one right here, sing along with us, okay? <laughs> you ever see that, that, that commercial they got on TV now for foot powders? Where the guy takes off his... The dog brings the, the guy's slippers, you know? 
And he gets ready to put his slippers on, he takes his shoe off, and the dog falls over backwards. <laughs> that killed me. Okay, ready? <laughs>
Thanks a whole bunch. Elvin, we thank you. All right, we, we hope you folks at home are having a good time. Tom Donahue tells me that we can take a break now and maybe come back a little bit later. Is that right? That'd be great, Vlad. This week, hey. we'll... Look out, boys. Shall we do that Groundhog song? Certainly. <laughs> One, two, three. <laughs>
those worms? Ah. <laughs> no, but I got plenty of whiskey. Hey, that's all we need. Never mind the worm. I don't even have a pole. <laughs> I brought him to the vet yesterday. He ain't got no worms. I tell you, man, if you bring bait and a pole and all that stuff, those fish will bother you to death. <laughs> Let's go fishing. Interfere with my drinking, right? It's a good excuse to get away from the old lady, though, ain't it? <laughs> All right, let's do it. One, two, three, four.
Hey, boys, let's do a little uh, wide river.
to thinking about that brown bird, you know what? All them other girls don't mean a thing. Don't mean nothing. Go ahead, Phil.